With season one of Has Been Hotel done, we here at Frederator felt it necessary to look back at this highly successful series. We'll cover its time on YouTube and its run on Amazon, taking a look at development, characters, and everything in between. We'll have something for everyone, old and new fans, as we cover 107 facts about Has Been Hotel. Let's get started. Number one, Has Been Hotel was created by Vivian Madrano, known as Vivzy Pop. Has Been Hotel's pilot episode, That's Entertainment, released on Vivzy Pop's YouTube channel on October 28th, 2019. Number two, the pilot was a massive success, which is obvious considering it got picked up by A24. To this day, as of writing this, it has close to 105 million views on YouTube. Number three, the Has Been Hotel pilot was animated entirely by freelance animators, with funding coming mainly from Patreon, proving once again that you can make amazing indie projects. Number four, growing up, Madrano was always influenced by adult comedy. At a young age, she saw South Park where she thought, oh my gosh, swearing is so fun. Madrano was also a fan of musical theater. Has Been Hotel allowed her to combine both of these into one. Number five, a day before the pilot was released, parts of a prequel comic focused on Angel Dust and the events leading up to the pilot were released. The first seven pages came out on October 27th, 2019, while the following 15 came out on July 7th, 2020. Oh, hey, that's my birthday. Number six, a pilot for a spinoff of Has Been Hotel, Hell of a Boss, came out not even a month later on November 25th, 2019. That pilot has close to 63 million views. Number seven, continuing with Has Been Hotel's pilot success, on July 17th, 2020, a full-length music video called Addict was released. It focused on Angel Dust and his relationships with Cherry Bomb, Valentino, and Addiction. Number eight, on August 7th, 2020, it was announced that A24 picked up Has Been Hotel. While the initial announcement didn't mention a format, we'll eventually find out that it was in order for two seasons and it would air on Amazon Prime Video. Number nine, several years had passed, but the Has Been Hotel A24 series finally aired on Amazon Prime Video on January 18th, 2024, with a slight delay from its summer 2023 anticipated release date due to the strikes happening that year. Number 10, despite the success of the pilot, several voice actors from the pilot had been replaced for the full series. While no official statement had been given, fan speculation ranged from the new cast are professional singers to this is a result of the transition from indie to a bigger production. Number 11, according to some cast members, the new cast wasn't aware of just how popular Has Been Hotel was online because of the pilot. Number 12, while the events of the pilot don't contradict a lot of the events of the A24 series, Vivzy Pop tweeted out the events of the Has Been pilot are canon, but the pilot itself, obviously a lot of visual changes happen, so I soft count it. But the events of it hold up pretty decently, I'd say. Still, the series sets the correct lore of this world. Whether this changes in the long run is up to time though, so we'll see. Number 13, if you consider the pilot canon, the A24 series takes place seven days after the pilot. The key clue can be seen on the clock tower countdown. The pilot's countdown shows there being 365 days until the yearly extermination, while episode one of the series has the countdown set to 358 days until the next extermination. Number 14, Charlie, one of the main characters of Has Been Hotel, the Princess of Hell, and founder of the Happy Hotel, is the only hellboard in the main cast of characters. Number 15, Charlie was one of the characters Madrano created while she was still in SVA. Kinda. While these early concepts for the character differ from her Has Been Hotel version featuring a more steampunk look, Medrano mentioned that she liked the name Charlie, so much so that she transferred her name over to Has Been Hotel. Medrano considers the two Charlies as separate entities. Number 16, Charlie's personality was stated to be heavily inspired by Leslie Nope from the sitcom Parks and Recreation. Both are very determined, even in the face of adversity. Early iterations of Charlie had a different personality, and Madrano mentions that ever since she pivoted to this Leslie Nopish character, it affected Charlie's design, personality, and performance, making her such a fun character. Number 17, speaking of Charlie's design, Charlie's design is inspired by vaudeville style porcelain dolls and goats. Madrano described Charlie's nose as being similar to that of a lamb or puppy, which explains Charlie's animal-like facial side profile. Number 18, Charlie does have hooves, but she's not a goat. When asked about why she has hooves, Madrano simply responded because the devil. She mentioned that the inspiration for these hooves were leaning more satyrs, those half horse slash goat half human creatures from Greek mythology. Number 19, Charlie is canonically a tall girl. In a Q&A, Madrano said that Charlie is six and a half feet tall. And when you look at it, she's way taller than her dad, Lucifer. Number 20, Charlie's pet cat is named Kiki, which, you know, makes sense since she's the literal key to the Has Been Hotel. Number 21, Charlie's full name was originally Charlotte Magne in the pilot. 
However, this was changed to Morningstar for the series. Both last names provide different wordplay. Charlie Magne can be read as a play on Charlemagne, the first Holy Roman Emperor, while Morningstar can be a reference to Lucifer, whose name can be translated to Venus or the Morningstar by biblical scholars. Number 22. Charlie did have an ex-boyfriend. Saviathan von Eldritch. A picture of them can be seen in the pilot as well as in episode 5 of the series. Number 23. Razzle and Dazzle, two small demons that serve the royal family, are modeled after plushies according to Madrano. They were given to Charlie during childhood, which could also be why they're shaped like plushies. Number 24. In episode 5, you can see that Charlie's contacts are filled with real-life mythological beings. Number 25. Moving on to Charlie's canonical girlfriend, we have Vaggie. In early promotional material for the has -Been Hotel pilot, it shows that Vaggie died in 2014. Her origin story is different in the series and is eventually revealed, but let's not mention that quite yet. Maybe maybe if we do a 107 more facts, I'll I'll it'll be spoiler full of spoilers. Number 26. Prior to the start of the series, Charlie and Vaggie had been together for at least 3 years as revealed in Hello Rosie. Number 27. Medrano has compared Charlie and Vaggie's relationship to that of Jack and Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. She even drew them as Jack and Sally. Look how cute this is. Number 28. At one point in time during a charity livestream, Medrano mentioned that Vaggie's real name was Vagatha. But this has to be a retcon, right? Since in the episode The Show Must Go On, Vaggie says that Vagatha isn't her real name when Sir Pentius calls her that. Number 29. The pronunciation of Vaggie's name is also brought up in Welcome to Heaven where Adam calls her uh, Vaggy, which he claims is because she is named after the quote-unquote best thing ever. Number 30. Medrano has expressed that she would want to put Vaggy in different outfits each episode if possible. Honestly, love it when characters change outfits in every episode. It just, it, it makes sense. Number 31. According to Medrano, Vaggy is Salvadoran like her and can be heard speaking Spanish in the pilot and in season one of the series. Whether or not this is still canon is still up in the air, as there are certain revelations in season one that might affect this origin story. Number 32. When Charlie first finds Vaggy, as seen in the episode 6 flashback, you can see that they're sporting outfits similar to their pilot designs. Number 33. Medrano believes that Vaggy would listen to punk or 80s era music, or even music similar to Melanie Martinez, an artist that appears on the official Spotify playlist for Has Been Hotel. Number 34. When you watch Has Been Hotel in the Japanese dub, Vaggy's Spanish lines are left untouched and undubbed. Number 35. Another character that has origins from Medrano's time at SVA is Angel Dust. Early concept images can be found as early as February 2013 on Medrano's Tumblr account. Number 36. Angel is from New York and has a Brooklyn accent to match. Medrano mentioned that Angel's origins were either going to be from LA or New York, and that she eventually settled on New York since none of the other characters are from there, and that she loves New York. I love New York. Number 37. As confirmed by Medrano in a tweet, Angel Dust's birthday is on April 1st. Number 38. Angel doesn't have breasts, just a fluffy chest, which he points out is a point of confusion for the characters in the show and adds to his sex appeal. According to Medrano, Angel's a cisgendered man who is just proud of his androgynous look and enjoys playing around with that. Number 39. Some of you might be asking, why does Angel have a super flat crotch? Well, Medrano has an answer to that. Other than the cartoon logic, it just made sense to have Angel have a retractable peen like his arms. Number 40. Angel's numerous voice messages from Valentino come with a little detail. Messages that have Valentino sweet-talking Angel can be seen with heart-shaped sound waves, while angry messages are spiky. They look like they have spiky teeth. Number 41. When shooting his porno, the clapperboard says 69, 420, 666, 13, scene 6, take 6, roll 6. All very important numbers, if you know what I mean. Number 42. Angel Dust's real name is Anthony, which can be seen when he signs Valentino's soul contract. Number 43. In episode 6, Welcome to Heaven, Charlie's line, We have a patron right now who is making incredible progress, Angel Dust, is a nice throwback to a very similar line she has in the pilot episode. Well, we have a patron already who is making incredible progress. And who might that be? Angel Dust. The porn star? Number 44. Angel Dust has a fraternal twin sister named Molly. She's apparently not a demon, nor is she in hell. Number 45. In Welcome to Heaven, there's a background character that bears a strong resemblance to Molly, but whether or not that's actually her isn't confirmed. Number 46. 
Angel Dust also has an older brother named Arachnus, which Medrano originally created years before Angel Dust. Number 47. In The Show Must Go On, the back of someone who looks like Arachnus can be seen watching the Extermination Day coverage on the big screen. Number 48. The radio demon Alistair was the first character created by Medrano who had designs dating all the way back to high school. Number 49. Alistair was a radio host and a serial killer from New Orleans. He supposedly died in 1933 by being shot by a hunter who thought that he was a deer. Number 50. Speaking of deer, Alistair's design is very deer-like. He has hooves, tufts of hair that look similar to a deer's ears, and his full demon form has massive antlers. This design influence dates back to when Medrano initially intended for Alistair to be a cannibalistic deer for her comic Zoophobia. Number 51. Funny enough, in episode 2, Alistair's mug says, Oh dear. Like, dear. Yeah. Number 52. The artist rendering that Vox uses when talking about Alistair in episode 2 is the same one that Medrano used to announce Alistair's redesign on Twitter. Number 53. You, uh, obviously notice that Alistair never stops smiling. Medrano mentioned in a tweet that Alistair's perma-smile is a self-enforced form of his ego, and that he sees anyone that can't hide their true emotions behind a smile as someone who's weak. Number 54. Alistair's unfiltered voice can be heard once in episode 8 when Adam breaks his staff. What just happened? Quack. Number 55. Alistair and Vox clearly don't get along. In interviews as early as 2019, when Vox was still a small appearance in the pilot, Medrano mentions that it's because Alistair hates anything created after his time of death, when his form of entertainment was peak. Number 56. Husk, a former overlord of hell, was originally designed by Medrano's younger sister, Maritza. Number 57. In the pilot, the 666 news report featuring Sir Pentius has him in a similar pose as the How Do You Do Fellow Kids meme. Number 58. Serpentius was originally going to be a one-and-done villain, but Medrano fell in love with his character and reworked the story for the series to make him the second guest to check into the Hasbin Hotel. Number 59. Serpentius died in the 19th century, which is consistent with his old bio from the pilot of him dying in 1888. Number 60. His name, Serpentius, is a play on the word serpent. Get it? Serpentius? <laughs> Number 61. In the final episode, when Angel Dust tells Cherry Bomb that Serpentius has two, um, snakes, he wasn't kidding. Snakes actually do have two of them. Number 62. Speaking of Cherry Bomb, obvious fact here, her name is a play on the Cherry Bomb, which are fireworks that are about the size of a cherry. This also plays into her explosive design. Number 63. Medrano says that Cherry was Australian when she was still alive and that she can probably play the electric guitar. Number 64. The short queen Nifty is designed with a sewing needle motif in mind, and that hasn't changed much from pilot to series. According to Medrano, the song One Eyed, One Horn, Flying Purple People Eater was an influence when designing Nifty. Number 65. It was stated during the Clock Tower Countdown to Premiere livestream that Nifty is the only straight character in the hotel. Whether that's true of the entirety of Hell, who knows, but definitely the hotel. Number 66. When Lucifer asks everyone if they want pancakes and the show must go on, Nifty is the only one that raises her hand. Cute. Number 67. Lucifer's hat features a golden snake and an apple, referencing the Garden of Eden. Number 68. When Lucifer visits in episode 5, you can see that the hotel is filled to the brim in decorations. However, if you pay close attention, you can see that the decorations make no sense, featuring It's a Boy, some Christmas decorations, and those sick balloons with the lights in them. Number 69. Medrano mentions that Lucifer can play the fiddle phenomenally well. His duet with Alistair in episode 5 proves that where he's shown playing a golden fiddle. This could very well be a reference to the Charlie Daniels song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, where Daniels plays a fiddle. Number 70. Another little detail is that Lucifer plays the fiddle with his left hand. In the past, left-handedness was often associated with evil for many different reasons. Being left-handed myself, I don't agree. I'm not evil. Much. Number 71. Lucifer can be seen leaking gold blood. This is because even though he's in hell, he is still a fallen angel and angels leak gold blood. Number 72. Lucifer's many animal forms are references to animals that have connections with the devil. The most obvious are the goat, which the devil is commonly depicted as, and the snake from the Garden of Eden. Number 73. In an interview, Medrano revealed that Alistair doesn't view Charlie as a daughter figure, as he implied in Dad Beat Dad. Alistair only said this to get under Lucifer's skin, which perfectly suits this egoistic demon. 
Number 74. There's a Lucifer reference in the Hell of a Boss episode, Lulu Land, which mentions that Lucifer owns a park called Lulu World, which is much better than that Lulu Land ripoff. Number 75. Pentagram City, the primary setting for Hasbin Hotel, is described as a big New York-like, Vegas-like sleazy city. It's located in the Pride Ring of Hell, which suffers massive overpopulation. Number 76. Hell is divided into several rings. Outside of the Pride Ring, we have the Wrath, Gluttony, Greed, Lust, Envy, and Sloth rings, which are all named after the Seven Deadly Sins. We explore more of these rings in Madrano's other series, Hell of a Boss, which takes place in the same universe. Number 77. Sinners don't have open access to the other rings in Hell outside of the Pride Ring. However, demons can travel between the rings however they please. Number 78. Hell takes many inspirations from several different sources, but Madrano didn't want to limit the concept of Hell to any specific texts, instead going for something much broader. I'm assuming that's why all sinners stay in the Pride Ring instead of ending up in their specific Ring of Sin. Number 79. There is a loose hierarchy to Hell. Madrano once provided a canonical hierarchy which places Lucifer on top. However, with the release of the full series, we'll just have to wait and see how this changes by the end of the series. Number 80. At the top is the royal family, and the seven deadly sins are ranked directly below the royal family in the hierarchy, unlike most representations of the seven deadly sins, which are often designed to be the embodiment of the sin they represent. Medrano designed these characters based on a circus act, with Lucifer as the ringleader. Number 81. The Seven Deadly Sins as a collective can be seen in both Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss. While we only see Lucifer, the Sin of Pride, in Hasbin Hotel, Hell of a Boss has Beelzebub, Maumon, and Asmodeus, each representing gluttony, greed, and lust, respectively. Number 82. Lucifer's ringtone is Entry of the Gladiators, which is often associated with the circus, leaning heavily on the circus act theming for Lucifer and the Seven Deadly Sins. Number 83. Overlords are ranked a few levels below the Seven Deadly Sins. While there is no hard confirmation on how to become an overlord, it can be implied that overlords are demons that have climbed in power and have control over demons and territories. Number 84. Zestial is canonically the oldest overlord in Hell and was confirmed during a livestream. This is supported by the fact that Alistair refers to Cecil as ancient, or Velvet calling him a grandpa. Number 85. On the flip side, the youngest overlord so far is Velvet. Number 86. The clock tower in Pentagram City received a heavenly facelift in the full series, since it now serves as the Heaven Embassy. Number 87. Angels in Hasbin Hotel have different forms. Similar to how demons can have a fully demon form, angels can have a fully angelic form. In this form, the angels have more eyes in their design. Number 88. Speaking of eyes, in the first episode, we see that Hasbin Hotel has some biblically accurate angels. You know the ones I'm talking about. You see those eyes? Those are, those are some biblically accurate angels to me. Number 89. Halo designs differ between angels. You can see that exorcists have black halos, while seraphim have light bluish halos. Adam even has a gold halo. Number 90. Just like hell, heaven seems to also have rings, which may be associated to the seven heavenly virtues. Number 91. If you pay close attention to the library scene in episode 2, you'll notice that there's a model of the structures of heaven and hells, rings and all. Number 92. Heaven also has a loose hierarchy. Fans have tried to put together what they believe the hierarchy to be, but again, there is no confirmed hierarchy for the series. Number 93. St. Peter is based on St. Peter from the first century. It's said that those who die will meet St. Peter at the gates of heaven, which is uh, exactly what happened to Charlie and Vaggie when they visit. Number 94. Carmilla Carmine is a top weapons dealer in Hell, but it seems that she also makes tools as seen when Nifty uses a Carmine drill in The Show Must Go On. Number 95. Carmilla Carmine's daughters are named Odette and Clara, the lead characters of the ballets Swan Lake and The Nutcracker, respectively. This ties in perfectly with Carmilla's overall design as a ballerina. Number 96. Even though Carmilla's daughters attend the Overlord meetings with her, it hasn't been stated that they are Overlords themselves. Probably just being chaperoned around. Number 97. Carmilla is mentioned in the Hell of a Boss episode, The Harvest Moon Festival, where a sniper rifle is referred to as Carmine Crafted. Number 98. In episode 1, Overture, Adam mentions that his favorite food is ribs, which is a reference to how Eve was created with one of Adam's ribs. Number 99. Lute's name is short for Lieutenant, given her position and association to Adam. The name was also supposed to be a placeholder, but it slowly grew in Medrano and became Lute's official name. Funny, because I didn't know what to name her for the longest time, so she was always the Lieutenant. 
Number 100. The title of the second episode, Radio Killed the Video Star, is a reference to the hit song Video Killed the Radio Star. And for me, I gotta shout out GTA Vice City for introducing this song to me when I was younger. Love it. Number 101. In episode 2, you can spot an old picture of Valentino and Vox in the background. You can tell this is an old picture because Vox is literally a CRT monitor instead of a flat screen. Number 102. When Vox blue screens, you can see his glitch was caused by Alistair.exe. I literally can't read any more of that because of uh, all the expletives that are there. So here's the screenshot. Number 103. Every time the Has Been Hotel is attacked, there's one particular wall that gets damaged and constantly gets boarded up. You can see it get destroyed when Serpentius attacks, then again when Cherry Bomb blasts through it, and it gets to the point where even Angel asks, what the f is with that wall? Also, by the end of the season, the wall is gone. Clearly, because the, the, the what happened to the hotel. Number 104. In episode 1, the delivery truck that Charlie hitches a ride on says Hell of a Post, which is a reference to the spin-off series Hell of a Boss. Number 105. Doubling down on the reference, any official merch purchased has a shipping method of Hell of a Post. Number 106. The outfits that the sinners sport when Alistair shoots the commercial for the Hasbin Hotel are the same outfits they wear during the pilot song, Inside of Every Demon is a Lost Cause. Number 107. In the final episode, the 666 news ticker text can be seen saying, When is season 2 gonna come out? I wanna know too because I enjoyed season 1. And with that, we have 107 facts about Hasbin Hotel. What facts did we miss? Because I know there's probably a bunch of them. Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we upload next. Hope you enjoyed, and remember, Frederator loves you.